Well, good morning, everyone, uh, and thank you for being here at our worship for Berkeley Methodist United Church. Um, if you're new to worshiping with us, I'm Reverend Craig Yoshihara, and as always, it is an honor and a pleasure to be here with everyone today. So first, I want to thank Kathy Ueno for that beautiful music um, that introduced us into worship today. That was, a, that was a really different rendition of America the Beautiful. It was just really nice and really beautiful. So thanks so much, Kathy. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started today uh, with worship. Um, when we get to the time of prayers, and I'll mention this again, when we get to the time of prayers, uh, please feel free to uh, type in your prayer requests either through um, the chat box or if you're following us on Facebook Live um, through the just through the regular comment section and let us know so that we can lift those up aloud. Uh, one thing I did want to share, which I will lift up again in, in prayer time, uh, for those of you who knew Bessie Akagi, um, Bessie passed away this week. And so, you know, please keep uh, the entire family in prayer um, as we mourn her passing. Anyway, um, I did want to share that with all of you, uh, but we will bring it up again in prayer and, and, and lift up uh, Jackie and Wayne and Naomi and their entire family up uh, so that we can just surround them in, in the love of God. All right, so I'm going to turn things over uh, to Lee to, to begin us off with a, with a word of prayer. Hold on one second. Sorry, Lee. All right, there we go. Good morning. We open our hearts and minds to worship loving Holy Spirit. We celebrated our country's independence this last week, a bittersweet celebration. We know that our history is filled with injustice, bigotry, but the basic idea of America, the dream of America, is equality, opportunity, and justice for all. Let us remember that. Grant everyone here your grace, your peace, that we all may see a new day, a brighter future for America. We come together today to worship you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you all. I hope you've had a great 4th of July weekend. I know sometimes lately, it's kind of hard to tell what's a holiday. Wasn't Lee have had a great time? You know, we did steaks at home and went out for a hike here in San Francisco. It was actually a really beautiful day yesterday. So I hope you all also were either able to see some fireworks or enjoy each other's company in your, your, small, your small pods of social <laughs> non-distancing. Um, this morning, um, we just have uh, one of our great hymns of the faith, hymn number 131. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. And that's what we want to share with each other. So I hope you will feel free to sing along um, with me this morning on this hymn, We Gather Together.
I am muted. Look at that. Um, thank you all. I don't know why I forgot to unmute myself. Uh, this is a time in our worship where we're able to lift up um, all the things that are on our hearts and on our minds. And so I wanted to give everyone an opportunity to share with us the things that are on your heart, the things that are, are either weighing you down and holding you back or that are lifting you up and making, making life wonderful for you right now. And so um, go ahead and please share those things so that we can uh, together lift them up in worship. I did want to, like I said, I wanted to lift up um, Bessie's family during this time. And she passed away really peacefully at 95. Um, it just happened really suddenly. So I know that whenever someone passes away suddenly, that's always tough for the family, regardless of what a wonderful life she led or how long she had an opportunity to share that life with those around her. Um, so please surround the family in prayer uh, as they go through this time of grief. Um, also wanted to ask you to please lift up um, Andrea Fujita Sher um, Schubert. She had a surgery on, fracture, on her fractured collarbone. So if you could lift um, Andrea up, I, I know that the family would really appreciate that too. Uh, Madhu asked if we could lift up her two sister-in-laws, both Yuki, who is hospitalized in San Gabriel after suffering a stroke, um, and Amy, who has a fractured hip bone. If we could lift up both Yuki and Amy in our prayers uh, for healing, I, I know that Madhu would appreciate it. Um, and as we do after we lift up a prayer, um, we say together, Lord, Hear our prayers. Uh, uh, Lee asked if we could please lift up her lifelong friend, Bob, uh, who at 85 has come down with the coronavirus. So thankfully, his, his girlfriend's taking care of him. But obviously, we're just going to continue to ask uh, God to surround him in love and care and to hopefully recover quickly. So Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, as Lee said, I know that there are a lot of folks who feel really conflicted about this weekend. And, and so we, while we might celebrate the many blessings we have, we do want to also remember the road ahead of us. Um, that there's a lot of injustice that we still have to face. That there are people in our country who are not free to the extent that we often think about it. And we'll share more about that in worship today. But if we can just continue to lift up our country in prayer for healing and wholeness, um, for unity and love, Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, Pauline asked us to continue to keep nursing homes in our prayers. Uh, Oh, her mom finally did test positive this week. Uh, and, you know, we've been praying for her mom and her aunties um, who are all in the same nursing home. And for a very long time, they've done well, even though there's been an outbreak at their nursing home. Um, but now all three have, have been tested positive. So far, she's asymptomatic. And Pauline reports that she had her 97th birthday on Friday. So that's a blessing. And and she is in good spirits, but let's continue to pray for um, all those who are in nursing homes, but especially let's lift up Pauline's mom and her aunts as they are hopefully recovering from COVID-19. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we just want to uh, also lift up Mary's nephew, Jordan, who's re also recovering from the coronavirus and just prayers for his continued healing. Um, and for Jordan's brother, Clement, who thankfully is so far not tested positive, um, but he is also not feeling well. So just prayers for both Jordan and for Clement. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us go ahead and 
together, let's bow our heads in prayer um, as we go to God this morning. Let's bow our heads and pray. Gracious God Almighty, we just want to give thanks to you as we settle ourselves in during this time of the coronavirus that we will stay strong, that we will continue to do what needs to be done, that hopefully we will serve as a guide and an inspiration for those around us. That even though I know we're, we're frustrated and tired of being sheltered in place, of having to take so much extra care, we know, Lord, that we do it not just for ourselves, but for those around us. And so help us, Lord, to remember that we do these things for the love of our neighbor, for the love of our family and friends, for the love of those we care about, and for those we don't even yet know. We pray, Lord, that all those who are going through the coronavirus who have contracted it, that they are on the road to healing and wholeness. We pray, Lord, for those who are seeking a cure or a vaccine, for those who are trying to, um, who are on the front lines of battling this every day. We want to lift up, Lord, all of those who are just doing what they can to make it through. For all those whose businesses have suffered, for those whose jobs have suffered, because of this, we just pray for, for them all, Lord. We pray that we're able as a, as a country and as a people of the world to find a way to support one another so that we can make it through together. We lift up, Lord, all those things that are on our hearts the ones that we've named this morning, but also the ones that are, are hidden. The ones that we have not shared aloud, but that you know. We ask you, Lord, to just continue to help us in our prayer life, that it would be rich and full, and that it would help us draw closer to you. In this, this past weekend, as we have remembered our country's birthday. We give thanks, Lord, for the blessings that we do have, but with a deep recognition of the road ahead and of the path forward. And we pray, Lord, for unity and strength together, for love and understanding, for acceptance, for diversity, for helping those with no voice to have a voice and for justice to roll down like a mighty river. We pray for these things, Lord, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I've been excited to, to hear more about this next song that we're going to hear. And uh, Naomi, it's something that's really special to her. So I'm gonna uh, ask Naomi to, to please share about what we're gonna hear next. Naomi? Yes. Um, this morning, I would absolutely love to share with you a video of uh, the person who was my piano teacher from the time I was six until I was 18 years old. So I essentially grew up studying music with this person. She's now in her 80s. 
And um, I have never seen a video of her playing music because I don't know, you know, she's not really like a YouTuber or anything like that. But um, her son sent this video to me and it's of a song called um, No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus. And it's actually her own arrangement. And so you'll get to enjoy hearing her play this. Um, I think that, you know, I have been at BMU for quite some time, maybe like 15 years. Um, and um, perhaps some people have thought that, you know, I've gotten to know about um, Christian music during that time. And it's absolutely true. I absolutely have. But what maybe some of you don't realize is that I actually grew up going to church very, um, my parents were very committed to our church family. And it happened that my piano teacher, Mrs. Fenley, her name is Eleanor Fenley, is also a very, very strong Christian. And I just took all of that for granted. And she actually is the person who taught me how to realize music from a hymnal she taught me how to play special, um, you know, Christian music arrangements. She encouraged me to create my own arrangements. And I just thought that that was what everybody else was doing as they also studied their Bach and Mozart. Um, but it turns out that all of those skills came so in handy for me. Um, and so when I came to this church, um, it actually felt very natural for me to share music with all the young people and to play hymns in church sometimes. And now as I have the weekly um, honor of coordinating and playing music to share with all of you and um, to also just, you know, have the opportunity for you to support me in music for my entire adult life, actually. Um, that's why I just thought it would be so nice to share with you a person who really helped shape the musician um, that I've been able to, and the music that I've been able to share with you during this time. So I hope you will enjoy um, Mrs. Eleanor Fenley. And I think when you hear her play, you'll, I started to kind of see like, oh, this is why I love music so much, because this is the person who taught me how to play the piano. So please enjoy. <laughs>
god, that was great. Oh, I think I let it keep going. All right. Want to um, turn things over to Lee and ask her if she would please um, introduce us to our time of offering, Lee. So when we give, we receive. When we give of ourselves, we receive the comfort, the certainty of Jesus's love. Let us broaden our minds to find ways, even now, to reach out to one another, to be generous to strangers, to send support to those necessary organizations that do good work. We want to work in the world as Jesus would. We will be your hands, loving Holy Spirit. Amen. That was a piece from Kenji Israels, uh, who shared with us, with us this morning. So thank you, Kenji. Uh, and now Lee's going to share with us our scripture reading this morning. Lee? I'm reading from Romans 14, 5 through 9. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. This end is the scripture. Amen. So what do you like to do on your birthday? Well, if you're a little girl whose birthday happens to be in just a couple days, you watch fireworks. Cassie was born on the 7th of July. And she told me growing up, she imagined that the 4th of July fireworks were, were for her. And I just thought that was so cool that you would, you know, you would see this great celebration up in the sky and, and, and feel like people were celebrating you. To have people show that much appreciation for you being part of the world. One of uh, my favorite times spending with her, sorry, 
uh, one of my favorite times uh, spending birthday together with her was when we had the chance to go to Tokyo Disneyland. We happened to go during her birthday and they gave her this sticker, which you can see both on the tablecloth and also on her shirt. Um, that's just, it just said happy birthday, Cassie. And as we, everywhere we went, literally everywhere we went, when we walked around, people would uh, come up to her. And even though we were in Tokyo, I mean, they, I guess they assume Cassie, being a Caucasian person, most likely spoke English. So everyone said, um, happy birthday. And they, they all clapped and they all bowed their heads. Happy birthday, happy, like everywhere we went. It was, it was great. I mean, she felt super special that whole day. Um, every restaurant we went to, just walking by people on the street, the, all the different cast members would just say, happy birthday. Everyone should feel that special on their birthday. It's, it's a chance for us to offer our Thanksgiving for you for your life, for you being alive. But this weekend, as we are remembering the birthday of our country, we might not be feeling as joyous, especially in these times. It, it seems hard to celebrate when there's so much going wrong right now. If 1776 was a time of joy and hope amidst trouble. Today we might wonder what happened. Our country is more divided than ever. We're under the leadership of a president who believes he's never made a mistake, who routinely debases and belittles the people around him, and who threatens the people of his own country with both physical violence and economic punishment. I think what's worse is he's not an outlier. He might be an outlier among presidents. I, we've never had a president who acted so unpresidential like. But there are plenty of people out there who support him and support the viewpoints he shares. I know that we like to think that we're the greatest country in the world. I mean, who doesn't like to think that the country they live in is the greatest? But I'm reminded of that brilliant speech in the opening for the show, The Newsroom on HBO, where Will, the newscaster, points out how far we are from that reality. But I also like how he ends that speech, where he says, but we could be. Despite all the problems that we have as a country, I do think hope is still alive. The ideals that are painted in the Declaration of Independence are ideals we're striving for. That we are endowed by our creator with the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those are worthwhile things to strive for. And we just have to realize that we're not there yet, not for everyone. But just because we're not there doesn't mean we should give up or, or that things are hopeless. We have indeed made great strides since the founding of our country. Uh, women have the right to vote. Uh, African-American people are no longer three-fifths of a person. Children aren't abused for the labor. And at least on paper, we have equal protection under the law. We look really great on paper. We just need to work on making that paper a reality. Because while things have improved a lot, you know, women are still only making about 80 cents to the dollar compared to men, despite the Equal Pay Act of 1963. Children are still being abused and neglected in different ways. According to the Department of Health and Human Services, about 670,000 children are abused or neglected every year. And that number hasn't changed very much in the past five years. 
And we only have to look at our TV screens to see that despite what's written down on paper, that racial injustice is still alive and well in the United States. So maybe more than ever, we need to pause and give thanks. I know that seems weird, right? We just talked about these things that are going wrong. But sometimes when things are going wrong, that's a perfect time to stop and think about the blessings we do have. If you have a Bible or a Bible app on your phone, I'm going to ask you to, to join me uh, to read 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, verses, beginning with verse 12. 1 Thessalonians 5, beginning with verse 12. It would be so easy to get caught up in all the things that are going wrong that we forget how much there is to be grateful for. But gratitude helps to anchor us. Gratitude helps to make it possible for us to endure hardship, to know that our work is not fruitless, and that despite the trials and tribulations that we are working toward a better tomorrow. Being grateful does not belittle our circumstance or ignore what's wrong, but instead gives us perspective and stops us from becoming bitter and angry, which seems to be the path so many people are following in the world today. We need to approach the things that are going wrong with an attitude of hope, with confidence, and with the ability to, to move forward and to work together. Consider what Paul wrote to his fellow believers. He said, now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. This might be Paul's most inspirational piece and also his most challenging at the same time. To be clear, Paul wasn't lounging on some beach on the Mediterranean when he wrote this. He wasn't drowning pina coladas soaking in the sun. Paul was hard at work at the church in Corinth at the time, trying to help establish that church. But he knew that the folks in Thessalonica needed some of his attention and guidance as they were going through difficulties too. Paul knew that being Christian meant having to endure persecution and ridicule, that there'd be people, that there'd be a lot of people who'd be resistant to these ideas of, of love and acceptance. And he knew there'd be times when people, the church would either want to give up or fight back with violence but that would be the wrong path. Not only is that against the teachings of Christ, but Paul knew that it really wouldn't get them anywhere. That if they wanted to make headway, they had to rise above it. They had to be better than that. And that's why he tells them to, to encourage the disheartened, help the weak, and be patient with everyone. I don't know about you, but that last one is probably the hardest. Be patient with everyone. It's easy to be patient with people that we like, we care about. 
it's hard to be patient with people who are at times ignorant or even downright racist. People who, who don't show you the same courtesy back. But tell me, when was the last time that shouting insults at someone got them to conform? When was the last time that you attacked a person's character and, and it made them just stop and think, wow, you know, they're right. I should just stop being racist and change my ways. Changing someone's attitude isn't always possible, but where it is possible isn't done by exchanging wrong for wrong. It's by showing love, by taking the higher ground and being better than that. Despite the flaws that are built into our country, you know, I'm grateful to be American. I look at the sham elections it just had in Russia where Putin basically gets to be president for life. And just thank God we don't have to go through that here. Uh, or the people of Hong Kong who suddenly had their freedom squashed when China decided to just ignore the treaty they have with Great Britain. Or the people of North Korea who have a dictator who doesn't even pretend to offer his citizens the freedoms that we enjoy. Again, that doesn't mean we don't have problems. According to Freedom House, who releases this report on freedom every year, we're ranked 51st among 87 countries that are considered free. 51st, pretty low for a, a country that purports to be the home of the free and the land of the brave, or the land of the free and the home of the brave. But we have opportunities for change in this country that are even now beginning to sprout new roots. The, the protests against social injustice that we've seen over the past month have made a real impact on our country, forcing us to look at ourselves in a new light. In the wake of the tragedies that we have been born witness to, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, these are by far not the only victims of tragedy due to systemic racism, but they've been the catalyst to awaken us to how far removed we are from the ideal that we often think that we're at, or at least that we hope to be. The protests have heightened our awareness of, of racial disparity and have brought about real change in a very short amount of time. A surprise when NASCAR banned the Confederate flag and it's racist. I mean, there were people who, who protested, but to see the support that they had for the only African-American driver in the entire circuit, Bubba Wallace, to see the outpouring of love for him was pretty amazing. Mississippi finally removed the Confederate flag from its state flag. I honestly, didn't know, didn't think that would ever happen. And legislatures making real reforms about policing efforts across the country and, and rethinking how we look after one another. Now, you may not feel like celebrating this past, this weekend, but we can certainly count our blessings. I don't know about you, but things in our country have seemed more hopeful in this past month than they have in a long time, three plus years to be exact. The Supreme Court's made a surprising number of hopeful but uplifting decisions. They upheld DACA, they, they supported the rights of the LGBTQ community, and even held firm on the pro-choice movement. Governors across the country are, are finally, even the ones that have been the most stubborn, finally starting to mandate mask wearing and be more cautious about opening up their different societies. Uh, awareness of racial injustice is growing and, and forcing us to look in the mirror at ourselves as a society. And the ways in which our systems have perpetuated racial injustice through our language, our actions, our assumptions. And even though we're still far from completing that journey, 
And don't get me wrong, there's still work to do, lots of work to do. That we are indeed walking down that journey. Birthdays are a time to thank God for the blessings in our life. We're about to celebrate Cassie's 29th birthday for the 22nd time. And when we do, I will have a lot to be thankful for. For the life that we've carved out together, for the experiences that we've had as a family, for the birth of our daughters, for Cassie's love and support, and for never needing to learn how to install a garbage disposal. And while our life isn't perfect, that doesn't stop me from, from being grateful for what we do have and how much I'm looking forward to an even brighter future. The same is true for our country. I really struggled when I was writing our message today about what it means to celebrate Independence Day in the light of all that's going on. But we're not celebrating things as if our mission's accomplished. But for what we hope they could be. We're not uplifting ourselves as an example for all that's right in the world, but instead we're giving thanks to everyone who's gone before to make it possible for us to be here today. And while we might not all be free equally, that we can give thanks for the freedoms that we do have. We still have a lot of work to do and freedom is not equal. But with God's help, we're gonna keep marching forward to that day that Martin Luther King promised us when he said that he hoped that one day he would be able to say, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know we're about to hear a really beautiful song, and I'm going to ask Naomi to share a little bit about what we're going to hear. Naomi? Thank you, Reverend Craig. Thank you so much for that message. I want to thank everyone else who was able to contribute to our day today. Uh, thank you to Lee as our worship leader and to Greg and Stephanie who are going to lead us in our final hymn and our musicians. Kathy, who played that beautiful jazzy rendition of America the Beautiful, and Kenji. It's always great to hear from Kenji. Um, it's kind of, you know, feels a little bit full circle as I also got to share from my own piano teacher. And then as I've also gotten to see Kenji from a very young age become the great piano player that he is today. Um, so I'm just, I have lots to be thankful for. And I'd love for us to also just remember um, the message of our next hymn. I don't think that the lyrics will come up on the video, but you can you know, follow in the chat or you can follow along as um, David, the great musician, the psalmist wrote in the original Psalm after each phrase, God's love endures forever. And so um, I think Greg will have a little something to share with you on this video. We're so glad that you could join us for worship today and for our final song, we'd like to sing forever. And it's a reminder that like the rising and the setting sun, God's love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things, his love endures forever.
Thank you all for being with us together in worship together today. Um, thank you to everyone who's participated to make this possible. But thank you to all of you for sharing in this with us. So as you go forth together to this week, as you go back out into the world, we just pray that it is with thankfulness and gratitude in your heart for all that God has done for each and every one of us. We just ask you to go on the world with an attitude of gratitude, with love in your heart, that we can make a difference in the world today for the better. And that while we may still have a road to go, that we can do this journey with one another and with the help of God, amen. Well, thank you for joining us in worship together today. And I want to invite you to hang out and just have some fellowship time with us all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unmute everyone or allow you to unmute yourselves. There you go. Yes, please feel free to unmute yourselves. And say hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> 